I'm a pretty well-known Adobe hater. Even though I defended them during the Figma acquisition stuff, for the most part, I hate their software. It's just not aging great. Their payment models are incredibly toxic. The fact that they have a monthly plan that isn't actually monthly and charges you like a hundred plus dollar fee to cancel, what? They're doing stuff that's so crazy, it feels like it should be legal. But sadly, they haven't had much in terms of real competition, like ever. For any one piece of Adobe Suite, you have a decent chance of finding an alternative. When it comes to something like Premiere Pro, you have great options like Final Cut and DaVinci. When it comes to something like Photoshop, you have great options too, from things that are in the browser to open source solutions. There are certain things that don't have great alternatives like Lightroom, but for the most part, Adobe Suite can be covered by other solutions. Although pulling them all together, it's not always the easiest thing. And if you're a professional in the creative world, you're probably stuck with Adobe some amount. Why are we talking about this today though? Like what's going on? Adobe hasn't made any announcements. They're getting some shit on Twitter because of how awful their pricing is, but what's going on? I'll be honest, I kind of clickbaited you. We're not talking about Adobe much today. We're talking about the companies that Adobe is scared of, one of which I have loved dearly for a long time, Affinity. Technically, the company is Serif, but their main product is Affinity by Serif. And Affinity Photo is the program I've used to edit every single thumbnail on both of my YouTube channels. It is a phenomenal piece of software. I don't just think it's as good as Photoshop. I think it is better. And when you consider the fact that it costs 50 bucks for life, that's actually insane. There are some important things to recognize though when software is that cheap and priced in that way. The first thing to consider is that once you've bought the software, they stop making money off of you. So they don't really have much incentive to keep maintaining it. Thankfully, this has not been the case with Affinity. They've done a great job of maintaining their software over time. The first time I purchased Affinity was all the way back in like 2014, if I recall. It was on sale for 20-ish dollars. I can't remember exactly, and I don't feel like finding the history. Regardless, I had it for seven years where they maintained it, and I got all of the updates for that whole window. Then. Affinity Photo version two came out. My immediate assumption was, oh no, I have to upgrade for full price, that sucks. Nope, they gave me half off. And I didn't even have to upgrade because they kept maintaining V1. When Apple Silicon happened, they actually shipped an update for Apple Silicon, even though they had a new major version. There was no reason they had to do that, but they wanted to maintain the relationship they had built with their community and the trust that was core to Affinity's brand. I have had such a great time working with Affinity and using their software. I'm currently in the process of trying to figure out some type of sponsorship or collaboration with them because I love them so much that I want to share the greatness of the software that they make. When we started chatting a week or so ago, I was told that they're very, very interested and excited in working with me, but they'd have to wait a little bit to figure details out and I'd hear back soon. I figured out why they wanted to wait. A message to our amazing Affinity community. Today marks a momentous new chapter in our journey together. I'll be honest, when I saw this, I was a little bit scared. But as time has gone on, I've honestly found myself pretty excited about the future here. As spooky and scary as this title might have been, the acquisition by Canva might actually be a really good thing for Affinity. Hear me out. I know big company acquiring small company is scary. At the very least, I'm not contradicting myself because I was in favor of Adobe acquiring Figma and was actually sad when that deal broke up because it hurts the incentives to build great things like Figma. This is very similar, but imagine it was Figma was the big one and they were acquiring a much, much smaller version of Adobe. This is very interesting, especially if you're not familiar with Canva, which if you're not, a quick TLDR is that Canva makes design really easy. It's kind of like, it's weird to compare it to this, but honestly, the thing it reminds me most of is PowerPoint, where it lets anyone drag things around, add rounded borders, make a background, make templates, do all these things that are necessary to make a good presentation. Canva did that for like everything. Presentations, to social media posts, they even have some video support and stuff too. Like their goal is to make it really easy for anyone to design, in quotes, most things. And I know some very talented designers that swear by Canva because it's so easy for them to make templates and make quick changes and things that it's become an essential piece of software for both creatives and non-creatives trying to make media. As such though, it's not really for professionals. It lets you create professional designs, but they have said themselves that this software is not built for professional designers. It is built for people who want to make professional designs. If they wanna compete with Adobe, that's not enough. And they know that. So the thing I'm excited about here is the potential for them to accelerate this. Let's talk about the announcement here and then I'll do my best to defend why I think this is a good thing. This is a moment of great excitement, anticipation, and profound gratitude for all of you who have been part of our story so far. We know that those of you who put your faith in Affinity, some since we launched our very first Mac app, will have questions about what this means for the future of our products. Here is them saying that they've built things that creators love to empower them. And I absolutely agree. They made me feel faster and more effective than ever, especially after I canceled all my Adobe subscriptions. We worked tirelessly to challenge the status quo, delivering professional grade creative software that is both accessible and affordable. And I, I'm telling you, it is insanely affordable. <laughs> if we just go look, oh, it's a 50% off for add-ons, 30% off for the apps right now. Yeah, for a photo right now, 48 bucks. 
for everything on all platforms, $115 for life for designer, photo, and publisher for all platforms, including iPad, by the way. And it's not like a gimped down iPad app that doesn't have all the features. It's the full functioning app. So you can open an Affinity project from your computer on your iPad and it works totally fine. It is phenomenal. And I don't want to stop emphasizing this. It is really fast. I found Photoshop even on my maxed out M2 Pro or whatever you want to call the spec of this, this four plus thousand dollar laptop still choked up a bit with Photoshop and photo chugs. Affinity Photo just flies. Designers, their equivalent of something like Illustrator. So if you're used to Illustrator and like the more vector based designs, logo, stuff like that, designers you go to. And then Publisher is more like Adobe InDesign, which is their program for making like PDFs and like news type stuff that you'd throw in a document and ship off. So uh, definitely the most niche, but also really good that they have all three. Photo is where I spend my time, but I can tell you with confidence, all three of these pieces of software are phenomenal for what they do. And it's really important to know that despite this acquisition, none of this changes. And this is a really important piece. In Canva, we found a kindred spirit who can help us take affinity to new levels. Those resources mean that we can deliver much more and much faster. Beyond that, we could forge new horizons for affinity products, opening up a world of possibility which previously would never have been achievable. This sounds like your usual marketing bullshit. From watching the video from the founder and hearing everything I've heard since, I think this is real. I actually believe that they believe this and I'm really excited to see what they do. This is saying that Canva has tried to make it so everyone can create, and that vision aligns perfectly with their core values and vision. The union is a testament to what can be achieved when two companies that share a common goal of making design accessible and enjoyable for everyone come together. There's a really kind thanks to the Affinity team for getting them there. A note to the users saying that we've helped them push. A lot of the usual stuff. Nothing here seems to be particularly exciting. Thankfully, there's a nice FAQ that has good details, and also a photo of the team, which might look big, but if you know anything about design software, that's a small team. Affinity's not a big crew. So this is a big change. I want to show what Canva had to say, though, because this is very important. And then we'll go to the promise Affinity made to protect us, because I, I have high faith here. Since launching Canva in 2013, we've been on a mission to empower the world to design. As visual communication becomes table stakes in workplaces across the globe, we're proud to now be empowering more than 175 million people to achieve their goals. But as we often say, with a mission this big, we're still just 1% of the way there. Today, we're incredibly excited to welcome Affinity to the Canva team. Yep, yep, yep. All good stuff. There's a line in here I'm looking for, though. This is the important piece, and this is why I think this is a really, really good fit. As I mentioned before, Canva's goal is to make design software anyone can use. And if you're a developer and you've used a no-code tool before, you know that's kind of bullshit. Can you make something that looks just like what everyone else makes? Probably. But if you look more in the details, it's not quite there. And once you expand things, they tend to fall apart. So Canva, as great as it is for most people to make like a quick social media post, if you're trying to do like big professional stuff or even stuff like my YouTube thumbnails might not be the best solution. They want to bridge that gap. And I think that's what makes so much sense here. And this is why I'm so excited. They straight up call out here that they are not good for professionals. While our last decade at Canva has focused heavily on the 99% of knowledge workers without design training, that's the key. They focused on the people who don't have design training. Truly empowering the world to design includes empowering professional designers too. That's the key. They're not going to sit here and pretend they can just magically make a tool that professionals will love and use. Pretending that they can would just kill them. Adobe won that space. They could try, but they're not going to. Instead of just trying to make something that people will hopefully someday decide to use, which they won't, by the way, because they already associate Canva with something they don't want. If they're associating Canva with design for noobs and they say, no, 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 we're for professionals now. No one's going to listen. But if there's a tool that is used by professionals and well-trusted like Affinity, that's a much, much, much stronger angle to get professionals to consider what Canva is building. I actually don't see a future where these products meld into one either. I see a way that they can share a lot of functionality and features, especially see opportunities to move more into the web similar to how Canva works. But I do not see a world where Affinity Photo becomes Canva itself or vice versa. I see a great opportunity to draw a hard line of this is for professionals that already have design experience that are trying to make incredible magical things and using the learnings and the technologies shared between the two to push both forward as well. And this is an important detail as well as using the resources that they have on the Canva side, because they have a lot more money than Infinity does in order to accelerate this and help them move forward. One of the biggest signs that I think this is the case is actually in the other article and I missed it. Canva had only contacted them a few months ago and they almost immediately jumped on it because they realized how powerful this collaboration could be and how much they could help each other out. It's really important to understand the goals of a company when they make a decision like this. Canva's goal here is, in my opinion, pretty obvious. They want professional designers to like and respect them. You can't 
just get like and respect by making a product that's not for them. And you certainly can't get that respect by taking a product they like and hiking the price up a bunch and making it inaccessible or ruining it. You can't just acquire something and acquire the trust with it. You have to acquire the thing and maintain the trust and carefully, carefully curate and craft a message and a product that keeps that audience that your goal is to have from churning. The only way this purchase is worthwhile for Canva is if the people who liked Affinity before like them more after. If I and others like me end up liking Affinity less because of changes Canva makes, this acquisition was a waste beyond a technology grab, and that's not what they're buying for. Canva doesn't just need the technology. They need the trust and care that the professional creative community is providing here. <laughs> and Affinity has built so much trust. I have never met a creative that knows about Affinity that has had anything negative to say about them. It's been alarmingly positive. So much so that I'm going to be accused of being a shell in the comments. And I'm sure if you scroll down now and look, there are going to be people saying that, oh, Theo's just a shell. Yeah, sure. Their software is fucking phenomenal and has made my life much better. For this to make sense, they cannot ruin that. We share Affinity's belief that professional design software should be intuitive, affordable, fast, and smooth. With Affinity, professional designers have access to everything they need at an affordable price and without the complexity of traditional design tools. Together, we're excited to turn the movement into a revolution. I think this is real too. Call me crazy, but it kind of sucks that Affinity is as good as it is, and many of you have never heard of it before this video. That's why the title isn't about Affinity, because as much as they're trusted by the like tight niche of really talented professional designers, they're not anywhere near as well known and certainly not as well adopted as I would argue they should be. Most Photoshop users should actually be using Affinity Photo. I genuinely believe that. Most people who are paying for and using Photoshop don't need the small pile of crappy slow AI features. They might really like the gradient tool, which I'll admit I miss. But when it comes to basically everything else, Affinity is as good and much faster. And probably the biggest deal is that Affinity costs less for life than Adobe Suite costs for a month. So yeah, it should have won, but it didn't. And that's why I think this makes sense. Canva knows how to win. They built and won a new industry category with their product. I have heard so many people, help. my mom asked me about Canva. They know how to do that. They know how to expand and grow and accelerate shit unlike anyone else. And if the combination that happens here is Canva's ability to provide resources and accelerate things, combined with Affinity's ability to build incredible professional software for creatives and creative professionals, the opportunity here is actually surreal. And I am so hyped that they might be able to push Affinity to be a real challenger for Adobe because Adobe has not been challenged yet. At the end of this article, they call out the four pledges that they're making to current and future Affinity people. This pledge, I think, is really important. I did see people who were concerned initially. This, I fully trust this, and it eased all of the concerns that even I had. So step into our shared future, we're committing to four pledges that we're excited to share with the current and future Affinity community. And as we read these, I need you guys to remember the point of this acquisition was to get Canva respect from professionals. So if they ever walk any of these things back, they're fucked. We will destroy them publicly. I personally will, I'll make this promise. I'll make a lot of content if Affinity ever walks these things back because I don't think they will. In fact, I don't think they can. I think Affinity dies and I think Canva's chance to impress professionals dies if they don't honor these promises. The first one is fair pricing. Perpetual licenses will always be offered and we will always price Affinity fairly and affordably. To remind you of the pricing here, the Adobe Creative Suite pricing right now takes a while to load. And when it does, 60 bucks a month, a month. If you just want Photoshop, 23 bucks a month. And if you use that price and then you cancel, you have to pay a massive cancellation fee too. If you want that price, if you want to be able to cancel, you either have to go to the traditional monthly, which is $90 a month with no cancellation fees. Yeah, are you kidding? That should be illegal. The price they're listing there is an annual price that you pay monthly and you get a fee if you cancel throughout. It's act This should be illegal. So the actual monthly cost is 90 bucks for one month of the Adobe Creative Suite. So hopefully that emphasizes why this pricing is insane. 115 bucks, which is the cost of one and a half months of Adobe for life, for life. You'll get updates forever. <laughs> it's nuts. Like eventually, if you want to get the new version, if they do a V3, they always provide really generous upgrade pricing. It was literally 50% off at the time. It's not only 25% off, but like that's a really good deal still. Especially when you consider how cheap it is. Like, whew. Holy shit, it's insane. Sure, this doesn't include the video editing software that's included with something like Adobe, but even if you remove that from the Adobe suite, you're still paying 50 to 60 bucks a month at least. So this price for life is insane. So again, 
they have a good track record with fair pricing. They're at massive risk of losing a ton of loyalty if they fuck that up. And I don't think they will. Point two is accelerating affinity. This is where I start getting real excited. Affinity is here to stay. It will remain the highest quality pro design suite, and we will now accelerate the rollout of new features. I believe this. They've been a bit slow for things like a, a good example that I run into a lot is generative fill. When I want to delete part of an image and have it fill properly, they just don't have the money to do all the crazy AI shit that Adobe's doing. And yes, Adobe's is slow, but Affinity is slow to get theirs out in the first place. Having Canva's resources and having all the crazy shit they've built to do this already that they can integrate as features into Affinity, that's a huge win. And I'm genuinely excited for it. Point three is that it's accessible for all. The Affinity suite will soon be made available without charge to schools and registered nonprofits. Whew. That is a ballsy move. But since Affinity no longer has to worry about going out of business because they now have a much bigger parent company that can fund resources for things like that, that went from being a huge risk to a huge win. And I love that Canva is using their resources to justify doing stuff like that. It's also important to know that once you win schools and nonprofits and things like that, your ability to ramp people into something like Affinity goes up a ton. I know I was an Adobe person because I used the Adobe student discount to go to like, I think it was like 30 bucks a month instead of the 80, which was really cool because I got to, in college, use the whole Adobe suite. And I never got to unsubscribe when I graduated and I ended up accidentally paying over $1,000 to Adobe. Fuck them. They're doing the opposite here. They're just giving it to schools and nonprofits for free. That is so cool. And it immediately eats out a huge chunk of how Adobe's funnel works. And again, this is why this acquisition makes sense because Canva can use their resources to help fix the one problem Affinity had, which was their ability to acquire new customers. And with that, the community point here is probably the most important. We are committed to shaping Affinity's future guided by your ideas and feedback. To emphasize the point of making this whole time, they need professionals to love them. This has to be a two-way thing where we go back and forth being the community of users and Affinity and Canva the company. We need to agree and we need to trust each other through this. And I have no reason to believe we shouldn't give them the benefit of the doubt here. This seems like one of those rare, perfect acquisitions that just makes so much sense. And I'm coming into this very skeptical because I was never the biggest Canva fan. I have a lot of respect for what they do, but they've explicitly never really made software I cared about. Out? This makes so much sense. And I'm really excited to see where it goes. They did say for the perpetual license thing that they might offer a subscription in the future. They don't say they might. They say if they do, it'll only ever be as an option alongside the perpetual model for those who prefer it. This fits with enabling Canva users to start adopting Affinity. It could also allow us to offer Affinity users a way to scale their workflows using Canva as a platform to share and collaborate on their Affinity assets if they choose to. That's a thing I could really use. If I had the ability to use like the Canva cloud to keep track of all of my Affinity projects that are currently in a giant Dropbox folder, and I could more easily share that with other people who are working on things with me. Oh, oh, I would gladly pay monthly for that, especially if that's just a new feature that I'm paying for on top of my existing perpetual license for the software for actually doing this shit. Oh, that sounds phenomenal. We'll double down on expanding Affinity's products through the continued investment in Affinity as a standalone product suite. They're not planning on killing Affinity here either, that they're going to keep on investing in Affinity as its own separate thing. Huge. And I know this is them doing marketing speak. I'll be the user who says it for them. Affinity is the most pleasant suite of design software I've ever used. This is a good thing to point out. The super fast part, especially, it's so fast. We want to reassure you that it's not going anywhere. In fact, we're committed to using our shared resources to continue expanding Affinity's products through future investments, yada, yada, yep, yep, you get it. Ooh, here, they actually say some things here. Highly requested features such as variable font support. Whew. Yeah, that's been a pain point. Blend and width tools, yep, that'd be really nice. Oh, auto object selection. I built a whole tool just for removing my backgrounds from images because of how annoying it was to do that by hand in Affinity myself. Yes, Photoshop has their offer for this too. Let me go find my tweet about that though, because it sucks. And here's their background removal. This is official Photoshop that you're paying like 60 plus bucks a month for. What the fuck did it do to my hair? What's going on here? This is an unusable image. Like what? How is this 60 bucks a month and it's this bad? Somebody mentioned in chat that Apple's tool is better. It is. None of them are as good as like the focus solutions for this, like um, Pick Wish or Remove BG. There's a bunch of things that are APIs and websites that do this much better. But holy shit, how is the subscription thing? You even see here when you select the object, it just like chops off the back of my head. It's like super blocky on the edges here. It just did a terrible, terrible job. Yeah, the feathering was awful. And then when I tried to actually do it, it crashed, which was hilarious. And I asked it to, to generate a new background for me. I wanted it to, to put me in a forest is what I tried with their AI stuff. And uh, yeah, it fucked up my face somehow. I don't know how it did this. It's just, it's unusable. And I was so excited. Everybody was like, oh my God, the generative fill and all the AI tools in Photoshop are really good. They're horrible. They're horrible. So uh, yeah, 
I will say from what I've seen in Canva that their stuff for this is much, much better than Adobe's. So right now, people look at this as like, oh, Photoshop has these features, Affinity doesn't, I'm gonna buy Photoshop. Yes, Photoshop has these features, but they don't fucking work. So if Affinity implements these features through Canva's tech and they actually work, they haven't just caught up to Photoshop, they've leapfrogged them. There's a massive opportunity here to kill all of the arguments in favor of Photoshop, and I actually think they can do it. I actually know Canva was already doing so much for schools and such. They have a thing where they've pledged 30% of their value as a company towards doing good in the world through their two-step plan. This is actually pretty cool. They have a 1% pledge where they've committed 1% of their equity, profits, and the team's time and product to be a force for good in the world, which includes they've given away the product for free for over 130,000 nonprofits. They've allocated more than 45,000 volunteer hours every year, three full days for everyone at the company. That's actually really nuts. Volunteer time is fucking expensive. Supported crisis relief efforts globally, such as the Australian bushfires and COVID response. Launched print one, plant one. Planting a tree for every print order placed through Canva. They've now committed to planting over 2 million trees. That's insane. Many other incentives. This is cool. They also call it the long-term plan. The founders are planning to commit the vast majority of their equity, which is 30% of Canva, to do good in the world. That's really cool that the founders are going to return the money that they make, which if you've ever seen and learned about how these big companies get formed, the founders make a lot of money. So for them to take 30% of the company's value and redistribute that is fucking dope. So yeah, I, I was skeptical when I saw that, but... Yeah, my, my inner founder has massive respect for this. That's so cool. And that they're clearly really putting their money with their mouth is and then some here. And they're offering it to 60 million students and teachers, but 600,000 charities now are using it. So that number was old. They went from 130K to like 600,000 nonprofits. That's huge. And it's really cool that they're now going to extend this to include designer, photo, and publisher. Whew. And now again, that, that fourth point I think was so important. Affinity and Canva were both founded on the basis that their respective communities of experts and non-expert designers deserve better. The tools available were overtly complex, overly priced, or both. We know designers deserve better. They deserve the highest quality tools to serve their needs, and they deserve to be treated fairly. I agree. This sentence is why I've been such an affinity shill for so goddamn long, because they felt like one of the few companies that recognized designers deserve better and worked hard to give them better. And it killed me that designers didn't notice and didn't try, but now they have more and more reasons to. We also believe the design community knows best what it needs. As such, we're committed to shaping our product based on your ideas, feedback, and needs. Here things off, we'd love to learn more. Da -da, da -da. Oh, cool. They actually have a Google form for giving your feedback. I actually really like that they did this. They put out a form that anyone can fill out to give their feedback on this. And the second question here is, do you have any concerns with Canva's acquisition of Affinity that you'd like to share? I'm actually going to take the time after this recording to go fill this out because I think this is important and I want them to know that there are loyal affinity users like myself that see a ton of potential here and are actually really excited. I know it's going to be controversial and people are going to be mad that a CEO is supporting a big company and doing an acquisition, but I think this is a textbook example of a good acquisition that benefits the users and the companies involved. I think this has a great chance of going well and at the very least, it should scare Adobe shitless. And Adobe deserves to be a lot more than scared in my opinion. So, uh... That's all I have to say about this one. Go give the Affinity Suite a shot. If you've learned anything from me, you'll know it's really good software. And let me know in the comments what you think about this, both the acquisition and the Affinity Suite, because I love this software, I love this team, and I hope I can continue loving it going forward. Until next time, peace nerds.